quick good idea, bad idea before. Yeah, we, we we're good. We're we're good. We're okay. in. Good. Yeah, you're, all right. You're, uh, you're eager, so I'm I'm down. I'm always ready when you got it queued up. All right, have a bunch of uh, people, like awesome people, come together for a burger benefit. Okay, that's the good idea. That the bad a, idea is. Uh, be the person who mispronounces the most famous person's name the entire day and not realize it until the next day. Was that you? <laughs> Maybe. That's unfortunate. Uh, you know what? I, you got to, you got to, you know, you know, you know, roll with the punches and, you know, take blame when it's yours. But I, I just thought it would be a good laugh, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> to like, to own up to like, oh yeah. It's one of those things where you go, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, the yeah. three O's. Yeah, I'm, been there, definitely been there. It's uh, <laughs> not on the mispronunciation of the the names. We're just like, oh, this is. So here's a little, uh, a little, a little uh, backstory on Sheed. I am still a local four seven nine. Shout out all my juicers, grips, and everyone in between. Um, so in case this barbecue thing doesn't work out, you can see me uh, laying gat for a mile and a half all around Atlanta. Uh, my very first day on set. Um, was for a pilot during pilot season for the show that actually ended up getting picked up. Uh, I think the working title of it doesn't matter now, but it was called Hindsight. And my first day on set happened to be the show's premise was they had, it was about like semi look into union work and, and one of the producers and all that jazz. So everyone looked the same, whether you're actual union or if you're talent or stand in. So I was instructed over walkie that, hey, we're just doing a, a run through. We're just double checking cables and everything. Fine. Uh, I didn't get my moniker as yet. So it was just, hey, she'd hang out here and check it. Make sure everything's good. Check the panel box. We got juice. Got it. I didn't realize like a minute and a half later, plans had changed and they'd gone into like uh, a take. So I'm just there standing in my position checking the box like I'm supposed to, like I was told, didn't realize they were running footage. And I was on film as an, they thought I was an extra <laughs> in the show. And I'm like, no, I, I'm actually union. He's like, yeah, that's great, man. So I'm like, no, like I'm actually. You're really into character. I yeah. like it. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm, I, this is my first day. That type of thing. And uh, so I think on one of the cut edits, you can just see a rather, Large. I was bald back then. Believe it or not, guys, I didn't always have locks. I was bald. I was running the the eleven fifty nine Mister Clean look, and um, you can see this giant Jamaican oak tree <laughs> without any leaves on him, just standing out in the corner at the back of the scene. Just I was gonna say that was back when it was no locks, no beard. Yeah, I was smooth, <laughs> straight milk dud. <laughs> but uh, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this week in barbecue, the barbecue focused podcast that brings you both the good. The bad and everything in between in the world of barbecue. I'm your host, Rashid Phillips, and joining me as always, he's amazingly talented, and he really needs some rest. He got some bags on here, brother. Oh yeah, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Brian Hull, American dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I like the troublemaker version better, but and all. Wait, always, when you when you have, when you own up to it, you just you just own up to yeah, it. Yeah, there it is. You know, steps. If you're gonna step in shit, step in both feet. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, voice you hear and the face you still do not see, Mr. Lee Garman. And ladies and gentlemen, we have an amazing show prepared for you all today. We've got some recaps, some news, some Q&A, and you guys have really been enjoying us calling in and talking with these different people. We discussed their amazing pit last week, so we're actually going to speak with uh, Mike from M&M Barbecue Co. Shout out to the whole fam over there. m M&M, thank you guys, as always, truly, for taking care of Pops the way you guys have been, and Y'all are in an amazing role. We're happy to be a part of it. But, uh, yeah, let's see if we can't give uh, Mike a little, a little jingle here, see what he's what he's up to. There, I don't know. Have you seen some of their rigs? As yeah, I mean, I, I saw – God, who was the one that they basically named it after the uh, Mandalorian? Oh, the L-Ray? No, the uh, the Silvercrest. Oh, the, oh that one. Uh, who's, who, I don't know who got that. I, I want to say it was um, – I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah. You do that, and um, I'll do – this on my end. I know Fox Brothers just got a really nice looking. Yeah, like the first one, the first M and M. You've reached Michael with M and M Barbecue Perfect. Company. Yeah, yeah. this message. is the part where you I'll answer get back the phone. To you as soon as possible. Yeah, 
they, I mean, they're busy right now. They he they had to make a post today about people contacting him just about the Goldie's pit. Oh yeah, I can imagine because it's blown up. They, yeah, he, he, we I was talking to him yesterday. He's like, uh, can we push it to next week? You know, we're going to be with. They got this stuff to knock out for Mo. Shout out to Big Mo. I'll mm-hmm. see you in a week, brother. I was like, I will be there with Mo. So <laughs> I mean, uh, to talk to Helberg. Him Helberg got the uh, oh, the silver crest. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I, we should do like a Heisenberg burger. <laughs> NFA has one. They have a Heisenberg burger? They have a Heisenberger. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, hatch green chilies. Oh. And they flip the buns and toast the out or toast the inside of the buns so it's reversed. Who is it? Um, um, so it's hatch green chilies Chilas and, and smoke. My buddy Chilas and smoke. He released a, uh, a book, Brad. Shout out to Brad. He's. Uh, He's doing a burg a donut burger series right now, that that I'm just like this is this is getting up there. It's inspiring me. I'm wanting to get oh so Mike. So Luther, right? He's doing the Luther. <laughs> the Luther Luther Vandross. Hey brother, how you doing? Oh, let me get you uh, tuned in here. I think it it, it might have bumped you. There we go. Now I can hear you. Oh yeah, I can hear you much better now. Perfect. Much better. How are you, my uh, man? I'm doing fantastic, brother. We are working hard. I was in the shop when you called, so I don't get very much service in there. So uh, I stepped out and I got the call. I was like, oh, let's go. No, nah, I appreciate doing it. Good. Dude, I appreciate it, man. So for those What's who up? are listening, because you guys are live now, please take a minute oh. and introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. I'm Mike Miller with M&M Barbecue Company, and I have Matt here with me. Yep, this is Matt Sutton, Eminem Barbecue Company. What's going on, Rashid? How are you doing, brother? We have not yet had the pleasure in person, but I can't wait to shake that hand, my friend. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, the time both will come. So much. I was I was literally just saying uh, how much I appreciate and love the work. I was a fan beforehand, but always love the work and how you guys have taken care of Pops. You know, uh, the, the rig just looks absolutely beautiful. You guys have been knocking it out the park constantly. We talked about your new rig with uh, Goldies, and we had so many people asking questions. I was like, well, we might as well go right to the source and uh, talk to the amazing (laughs) guys behind it, you know? Yeah, heck yeah. Perfect. Right on, brother. So uh, let's uh, let's start there. What uh, how did you guys get into this world and then into this realm of of not necessarily being the cooks, but building the pits that some of the most amazing food in the world is being cooked on. Yeah. So, um, I'm a second generation. Um, I've been around, uh, barbecue and pretty much my entire life, but on the, on the, uh, uh, fabrication side, uh, on the repair side and all that stuff, I've been doing that for a really long time. I, my dad has actually been repairing smokers, uh, for 30 plus years. Wow. So, um, I grew up, I remember going on service calls with my dad when I was a young kid you know, young, young kid. And, um, so uh, I've been doing that day to day for around, you know, 15, 16, 17 years now. Um, I've traveled all over the nation working on them. Um, uh, I know the ins and outs of, you know, a lot of units. So like it's been ingrained in me for a really, really, really long time, you know? So, um, it's been wonderful. It's been great seeing the, you know, just the boom of barbecue, you know, and, uh, something that's been near and dear to my heart, you know, that I've done, you know, every day, for so long and then uh my dad as well it's, it's just been wonderful so that's what got me in you know into uh the building side and the repair side and all that stuff so we were really quiet and that's what we did for a really long time uh and then um and then my best friend matt uh we've known each other 30 years now so we're we we're pretty much inseparable so um i'll go ahead and let him tell tell you uh his his story yeah so like it's really we've talked about a few times m and m's kind of the perfect storm him and I put together. We've known each other since we were 10 years old, went to elementary school, middle school, high school, and college together. And uh, in college time was really when I was a little bit around his dad and doing service work and restaurants and all that. And I actually ran a kitchen for about four years in college. And uh, I uh, decided after college, I I wanted to work with my hands. So I went to a tech school and I wanted to build custom cars for a living. So that landed me in California for about seven or eight years building, you know, custom cars, one off, you know, at the highest level. And uh, already kind of having that background, want to get out of California and get back home. Mike and I just never lost touch and put our heads together, man, and put barbecue, you know, the history, the knowledge combined with the fabrication side and skill. And 
here we are. No, I, I absolutely love that. Just the the long friendship. I've uh, I've got one here in the studio with me that I, <laughs> you know when you when you have them, it's good. You can't you, you can't shake them if you wanted to, nor would you ever want to. But uh, I, yep. I love that it's just just second generation. You you follow the trade. You built upon that. And the first thing that comes to my mind, I'm sure Brian's got some questions too, but the first thing that comes to my mind with hearing that, uh, Mike, is do you think the, 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 the decades, really, you spent repairing rigs helped give you a leg up in designing the models that you're making now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, you know, um, I was able to see things that, um, you know, firsthand problems. Because I was able to repair them and see, I would, I would be able to go in and go, okay, this isn't working. Uh, that isn't working. We can improve this. We can make this better. We can make this better. I think with that history and being able to go in and do all that, it's tremendously helped because there's, there's certain things that we know that we're just like, that we already know that that's just not going to work. Yeah, it sounds great. Looks good on paper. It's like we can get people excited with it. But at the end of the day, we want it to be functional. We want functional art. We want when you have buy an M&M, you're like, man, this is the baddest hit out there. But we also work on function. We already have, we have the history. So we're like, this is going to work. This we know will. So like that's given um, us a huge leg up um, from everybody else. Cause you know, a, a lot of people, you know, they never really were into building pits. They never really were into that stuff. You know, whereas, you know, uh, I've been around that for so long. I was able to, to take all that knowledge and, Get, and bring that to all our new pits and then with matt me and matt working together with his expertise we again like you said earlier we're a perfect storm we have all this history that we have history and knowledge and then we bring that with the fabrication side and um that's what's kind of pushing us forward and pushing us forward you know we don't like to stay at a rest you know we want to keep going and get better and better for our customers if we can solve our customers problems which is what i came across of when i was doing repair work i could see the problems that the customers have and and so what we did is like, what are the main things that we can fix on our units, whether it be an offset, whether it be a rotisserie, whether it even be a backyard, you know, how can we fix these problems for these customers to create the perfect fit? Mike, uh, do you mind if I jump in real quick about solving customers' problems, even if they're not your own? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, uh, yeah. the first time I've ever come across Eminem, I was at Socks Love and their pit went down, their JNR oiler. And I yep. was it was it you, Mike, that uh, just hit up Stephen out of nowhere and walked him through how to repair that pit? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. He called. Yep. He called me. Um, and yes, you know, I help. I, I've had people call. You know, with Jane R's. Uh, I've had people call with Southern Pride. You know, and we're here to help. And you know, uh, I actually he got my number from uh, uh, another guy uh, out of Pennsylvania that actually just got one of our pits. Um, wonderful, wonderful guy. And so. Um, I helped, he had the same problem and he called me. He's like, I can't get help. I don't know what to do. I'm down. And I've been down for a long time. And, um, I think it was like six thirty, seven o'clock, you know, uh, in the evening, they called me and I diagnosed it, had the part to him the next day. And then he was able to run, you know, be able to start running the, the next day. We next day aired uh, the part to him. And, um, and then that's how Steven from Thought Club, um, he, they got, he got a hold of me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, I was just, like, it's a great story because you guys, like I said, you're helping people even when it's not like your product. You guys are so invested in the community and making sure that everything works. And it also goes back to your years of actually fixing these things and working on them so you know the ins and outs. Yep. Yep. Yeah, when, you, when you're when you in the back of a restaurant, you know, for 20 plus years, and that's really all you're doing. You just see what goes wrong what causes stress, what causes people to lose sleep, what lets them lose money in their business. It, you know, the core focus of what m is about is solving our customers' problems. But, you know, we, we, we like to call it functional aesthetics. We like to look good while we're doing it. We have our unique style. But the core focus of anything is how can I save you money? How can I let you get home to your wife more? How can you sleep more and not have to be up all night? So, you know, what you're alluding to, the firsthand experience of actually talking with managers and, GMs and pitmasters that run restaurants and really get to see what the problems are. And that's the first thing we attack with whatever we're building. And that, that, and I'd have to say that it goes uh, without showing in the level of detail and craftsmanship that you guys put into everything. And I, I swear it's like every other day you guys, you guys are basically like a, 
the skittles of builders like the rigs are just these amazing colors and every day they're just rolling out to all over the place and uh thank you for blessing georgia with one of uh your the units the first big boy <laughs> m&m here is over at fox uh shout out to justin and the whole crew over there um we're really excited i can't wait whenever we decide to open up doors uh, we definitely know what we're cooking on <laughs> <laughs> And you know we'll be here for you too. Yeah, we're we're, we're super excited to finally get to Georgia. You know, we've been wanting for a long time getting Atlanta. So like, you know, uh, when we established a you know relationship again, we just met, you know, and talked and all that. And then that you know that relationship bloomed, and then we talked more about it. And then you know, and uh, we were able to build them in a, a pit. And you know, we're we're honored to be able to work with some of these pit masters and some of these guys. That, you know that. Um, that they choose our equipment, you know, it, it's an honor for us. And that each build that we do for each one of them, we try to make something unique to theirs and, and, uh, and just try to make the best product for them, you know, cause you know, even, you know, we were talking about working on the, uh, other people's equipment and helping those guys out and stuff like that. You know, um, it, it's, it's, it's all, if, if they can't make money and they can't survive, you know, because this pit is down, then, you know, they're not going to be able, they're not going to be able to keep going. They're not going to be able to keep paying their bills. And, and that's not good for anybody. That's not good for me. That's not good for, you know, for them. And, uh, um, we're all community this, this, you know, barbecue is different than any other, any other, you know, um, thing that you can look at any other yeah. food, because we are a huge community. You know, we, yeah. we try to help each other out and, and it becomes a brotherhood. I mean, it, it's, it's wonderful. No, I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. And, uh, you know, everyone, the media and what have you will have it, uh, the top list, this, the top that, you know, it's, it's, it's a community first, not a competition. And even a uh, perfect example of um, when we linked up at Holy Smokes, you know, we just had a great chat, had a wonderful conversation. It's, you know, anything I can do, oh, I'd love to meet so-and-so. Great, it's done. Yeah, let's make it happen. Let's, let's let other people know how, how dope and amazing you are i think you, we even facetime pops that day too so we could see and chat with everybody and it's barbecue i think is really one of those realms where at a moment's notice if anyone's in need like we all come together and help in any way shape or form that we can it's i love it i love the community i love that you guys are part of it and i know you guys are pressed for time and we had some questions and i want to ask them in regards to the new rig that you guys uh worked on with goldies tell us a little bit about that we we caught a little snippet of the of the recap video the explanation video and why the design uh we spoke on it last episode and i guess they heard us because immediately after uh they went out and filmed a biscuit test on it so uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, yeah, yeah. thanks for listening guys and thanks for the the, yeah. the invisible shout out we know where you heard it from um <laughs> but how was it doing that rig uh how you saw that design come across and you're just like was it a head tilt what was it a head scratcher like how did that go about uh, i'll be honest with you. i initially saw it and thought it was like it was unique that this is gonna definitely it's gonna be a conversation peach for one. Like it's the old saying we I've always said, you can be the juiciest peach in the world and some people just don't like peaches. That's you true. know? And uh, some people are gonna hate it. Some people are gonna love it. And I, once we got done through that, you know, it's not ninety nine percent uh goldies and their design. We just he left us creative freedom for the sand and, you know, hinges and small things. But other than that, the whole flow and how he wanted it to work with goldies and when it was done, man, it looks cooler in person than it does in picture. It, like, it really has, like, a 20s, like, log cabin wood furnace feel from behind. Yes. It looks cool, man. Yes, it does. When we finished it, you know, when we were building it, we were talking about it. You know, again, Johnny approaches, like, hey, you know, would you be willing to do this? And he's like, I've had this design in my head for a long time. And we're like, and, you know, like, hey, you know, let's see what we can do. So he actually sent me a, a sketch on, you know, a small out sketch. And, you know, this is the kind of design. So we put it put it in our computer and we're like, okay, let's see. And, you know, uh, uh, and, but like Matt was saying, it was like 99% their design. And when we finished that thing, I can tell you right now, me and them both looked at it and go, this looks bad. It looks awesome in person. We actually had a few people stop by the shop that saw in the bay windows in the bay and stop buying like, are y'all selling those? You know, they didn't know who Goldie's was. They don't even really know who, who we were, yeah. but they just liked the style. I mean, it, it really looks really cool in person. No, it and looks cool. It, it flows too. I mean, if you think of the product, the amount of product that that thing holds, 
is amazing. And that, and I think that biscuit test really, really showed how much you can do. I mean, that, that I think was a complete win. And it, I believe that's really great too, is extremely transparent. When Johnny sent me the video, I go, man, I go, the one thing I love about this is it's transparent. You're not trying to hide anything. Mm -hmm. This is at 300 degrees and that thing has 54 bris uh, 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 biscuits on it and only four. Like yeah. that is, that is money. Yeah, and you, you look at it and you see just that one spot, and that, that visual is paramount for what we do because I tell people after they finish season their rigs, I said the first thing you need to do is go get you a bunch of biscuits and run a biscuit test because once you get that image burned in your head, it expedites it. your entire cooking process and knowing your rig. Like you have to know how your rig flows, where the spots are, where it's cooler because it will stop you from making – amateur mistakes during your cooks one thing about the design that i just thought about now is i don't think you can have a grease fire in that thing someone will find a way someone will find a way <laughs> but but but, but it, 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 if you properly maintain it i don't think you can have a grease fire in that thing so who knows what they're doing we we couldn't cause a grease fire but brother we how many videos there are millions of turkey videos <laughs> every year and what do people do they buy the container it has visuals it has a video it has step-by-step don't step drop in a frozen turkey and they still burn yep. their house down someone they will find a way <laughs> yeah we, we've been doing we've been doing service for a long time you'd be amazed at some yeah. of the things you see in some some say. restaurants like man but yeah if you just cleaned it a little bit but yes with the way that that oh, we, we know all about bottom. we know all about barbecue restaurants not cleaning their 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 ribs. yeah 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 it's uh some in some cases it's scary, but you know, oh, yeah. uh, but yeah. So you know, with with that fire being away from it, that does help a ton. It, it helps a lot. You know, uh, yeah, you've got a good. Uh, I don't know off top, but at least the opening, you know, where it comes in is at least you know you'd have to have eight, nine, ten inches of grease in the bottom of that thing for it yeah. to get up there. Don't don't even try and like someone will do it. Someone will challenge it. <laughs> someone, someone out there, and then they'll say it's the you know it's a. They built it wrong. No. Yeah, they, you just yeah. you just gave them a challenge. It's the ten inch grease yeah. challenge. So someone out there is going to listen to this and is going to say, "Hold my beer." Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yep. This disclaimer: Eminem does not recommend you fill your tank with oil. With yeah. grease. <laughs> with grease. Yes, please, please. Clean don't. and maintain your pit, please. It's so important. So we'll see. We'll see if they listen to this part and make a video behind it. But after they use it, I think it would be very pertinent for them to document the first cleaning and the process of it to show the ease of use yep. and just really give them a full tour and, and, and once over because it's an amazingly well designed rig that was absolutely built to perfection. Um, and I think it's a game changer. I think it's one of those that sort of put a lot of other builders on notice a little like, oh, okay, because everyone's been sort of basically building off the same two, three designs for a while, but that, that, that's different. That one is di very, very different. I hope they yeah. get a patent on it. Yeah, we're, yeah, I think that's in the process. It really is. Because on our offsets, I think we have, like, what, two or three on ours. Yeah. So, um, And you guys are into that. doing one on the cantilever for the uh, El Rey units as well, I saw. On, yeah. On the video. Yeah. Yep. Very yep. nice design. Yep. No. Yeah, we love that design. And really, we never saw one ever once, you know, so – you know, we spent a lot of time, you know, we, me and Matt, it's not just overnight. Even like our firebox on our, our thousand gallons and 500 gallons, that was not an overnight thing. That's two or three years of constant changing, constant adapting. And, you know, and we're sitting there and, you know, and, and it could be a quarter inch difference, but we'll look at it and we'll go, man, I want to go a quarter inch or uh, yeah. two inches. You know, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, we have six inches of insulation all the way around our thousand gallon uh, fireboxes now, you know, so like, um, every piece is really thought of and it takes time and you know at some point you have to kind of protect you know all that time and money that we have invested into these things yeah no i, I agree because if not people st steal your idea just and they can push a lot more behind it and you're like guys that it's a lot of trial and error a lot of man hours just a lot of heart as well goes into these rigs so it doesn't just uh, yep. start out as a sketch and doesn't end when it goes to the customers, the follow through that you guys do. And I'm a huge believer, so much so it's our actual uh, motto for Phyllis Barbecue Co. you know, uh, when you put your name on something, you got to stand by it. 
Clinton Dollar. Yep, yep. It's, 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 it's a beautiful thing, guys. I truly appreciate you all taking the time. For the listeners, how can they get in touch with you guys? How can they get on that 27-year wait list that I'm sure is very, <laughs> well, very <laughs> much I, I, right how, 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 how much uh, – how many people have reached out? Do you, do you even have a count? Oh, They're still man. Counting. They're still counting. It's still – I mean, I mean, hundreds and hundreds. It's been, I, I, at first I didn't know, you know, we, we kind of were, you know, we were kind of, me and Johnny were talking about it. We, we really wasn't sure. But once we launched, once we even just launched the thing, it has just hundreds and hundreds. We even, so we, we had so many people, you know, uh, emailing us and, and texting and calling that we put that disclaimer out. Well, not disclaimer, but hey, you know, we put something out on Instagram yesterday and Facebook going, hey, you know, uh, we're trying to siphon through all this stuff it we haven't launched it on our website yet and but but Tina my wife came up today and she's like the emails are still pouring in she's like you know and I was like well just just we'll get the website should be done at the end of this week and then we're just going to launch it and just you know uh do you know just do the best we can but yes a hundred tabs we love it it is so well deserved and it's just it's the start of so much more for you all in, in so many ways, I know we've got some fun stuff we've been kicking back and forth, and I just, I absolutely love to see this happen for you guys. It's couldn't happen to a better set of uh, guys, better, hardworking, dedicated to the craft, and not just in it for monetary reasons, but genuinely care to propel and change how barbecue has been done. And rigs and designs and builds such as the ones you guys are cranking out, yeah, uh, Eminem is definitely going to be that household name in the world of rolling smoke and you guys just let me know whenever that sausage cooker gets done <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm still waiting on it yeah well we actually might have something uh in the works on a uh sausage cooker so um we might have something going on with that uh in the near future so a little wink wink on that one yeah we're also just just to help a little bit hopefully we're doing some serious research and making some moves on shop side and fabrication side to speed up to cut that weight lift down yeah it's already past where we want to be so we're hustling on it it's just uh good good problems to have but it's yeah. a problem that's for sure yeah when we didn't feel like our, when we when we do this again we care about the customer a customer cannot wait two years a customer cannot wait a year and a half you know that's a long time to wait and for us we we know that and it's like we've got to speed up which you know, right now our offsets are a year plus now, and that's with us working seventy plus hour weeks. We yeah. work every Saturday, dang near every Sunday. You know, so like we're trying, and now we're just going to try to hone it in better. Uh, you know, we'd love to get it around. You know, six months or less. That'd be a, a wonderful, wonderful goal. Uh, and we will. We're going to. Uh, and we're thankful for our customers that have waited over a year for their pit. You know, and been super patient with us. You know, we really appreciate that. Yeah, I've been on lists. I've waited two years for a rig. You know, heck, it takes yeah. uh, six months to build a Rolls Royce. So it's uh, it's one of those things. It's definitely like one of those things. I, and, and you, can't, you, you 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 really can't rush it. And like, hey, if you wanna, if you want it, this is the wait. And I oftentimes, and I've, we've talked about it before, sometimes the wait is the best thing that can happen to you because you realize your wants and needs may change you realize what you truly yeah. want you have time to think about it it's not yeah. an impulse buy you know so yep. uh never never apologize for that weight and those who see and understand the value they are more than happy to you know it's 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 yeah. worth it I'm, I'm i'd be happy to wait <laughs> two two years for it because i know <laughs> when i get it that it wasn't rushed that because I've gotten rigs, there's a and Lee will tell you there's a rig in my backyard that has been sitting there for three years, close to oh, wow, three, close three, to. yeah, three years, almost four years that has never had as much as a candle lit inside of it because it was such a horribly rushed deal that I'd never use it. Oh my god, yeah, wow. it, and it's it's so bad. I mean, shelves on even. There are uh, jagged uh, uh, ends from uh, uh, welding wire everywhere. It's, it's not, yeah, it's fine from far away. Like a good, it's a good 60 footer. You're like, oh, not bad. You get up close. Yeah. Like, this is, <laughs> yeah. this yeah. is horrible. Yeah. This is God off. You know, like a stack of dime um, beads that you want for welding. Yeah. Mine looks like someone threw a bunch of Uno cards all over the room. 
it's, oh, it's, man. It's, it's definitely it's falls under unfinished. Yeah, it is bad. And that thing has never gotten a flame and never will. But I keep it there as a reminder that though in the same community, though in the same world, not everything's made the same. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. But uh, fellas, yeah. thank you again. Uh, what are the socials? Send us the socials, the sites. Where can people go see your amazing stuff and support you? Yeah, so on Instagram, uh, TikTok is MM Barbecue Company, and uh, our website is mmbarbecuecompany.com. Perfect, perfect. We will drop that along with uh, some links to the amazing recap videos, some showing the L Ray and this new amazing Goldie's Pit in the show notes. Matt, Mike, absolutely appreciate you guys jumping on and uh, love the hard work. We'll catch up soon. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Take Not care. a problem. Thanks, guys, for coming on. All right. Thank you. You know now you have to make a video of cooking on that pit, right? Never. I've never. I've oh, legitimately. No, you don't. It's no, no, no. No, like y- you have to make a video. You'd have to do start the from 60 is, feet out. The thing I don't even I will, know that it, you. I've yeah. never. I've legitimately never used it. You know what I use it for? To store my cast iron. <laughs> I have never put a fire in it. No, I'm saying I'm saying it would make great content. Oh, I'm sure it would make great content, but I, my time is more valuable than burning that. Just turn it into a propane grill. I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I, I'll turn it into a pellet. Or smoker. or or, <laughs> we, or or we could uh, instead of pen my ride, pen my smoker. Save a, save a smoker. I should. You know. save, we'll send it over to Eminem. <laughs> Mike, Matt, if you guys it. are listening, I'm going to ship you guys a smoker, and I need you to 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 fix it, bring it back to life, dismantle <laughs> it all. You know, it, it needs, it is needs Exhibit work. doing anything these days? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We should check. Like, hey, Exhibit, can uh, we've we've got an idea we want to run by you. <laughs> just 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 hear me out. Hear me out. See if uh see if it works out for you. No, uh, but thank you guys again, um, amazing guys, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we were just finished having a wonderful conversation with uh, Mike and Matt of uh, M M&M and M Barbecue Company, based out in Texas. Check them out. They're doing absolutely amazing things. Worth the wait. But uh, let's get into uh, some of these news. You, sir, first and foremost, had an event. Well, numerous, but uh, the hat event is what I'm talking about. Okay. The N- uh, yeah, NFA Burger Billy Kramer threw on a, what he called the Burger Benefit to raise money for the Giving Kitchen. So that was this past Sunday. And those who don't know what the giving kitchen is. Uh, it is an organization that helps, uh, restaurant workers and their families across the country. Um, whether it's a restaurant closing or medical issues. Um, it was started by out of, wasn't it state, the owners of staple house. Yeah. 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 Um, and so it was like 20 plus chefs all came and did their, their version of the menu burger. So the burger from the menu, the movie, movie the, menu, the menu, yeah. yeah. So the base components, it had to be a double stack cheeseburger with onions and pickles. Mm-hmm. And then you could go from anywhere from there. So there was a lot of cool burgers, but they, uh, so far they've raised almost 45,000 and there's still a donation uh, going up. And I know Billy wants to hit 50,000. So we'll throw the link up to the donation. We will, we will. But, uh, you know, some highlights. First of all, like I've been meaning to get out. The thing is when we're up, we... I always have pop-ups on Saturdays. You're like you're out of town doing an event on Saturdays. <laughs> uh, actually, you were in town this weekend doing an event, event. on I a Saturday. Doing, <laughs> I was doing events all weekend. We yeah. hit, we hit all uh, a good bit of Atlanta. Uh, we hit a good bit of Georgia this past weekend. Next up, Colorado. Then next week, we're in uh, good old uh, Memphis, and then the week after that, um, production changed so supposed to be a treaty but the production schedule for filming changed so i'll be in texas but i'll be in a different side of texas then after that it's back to tennessee um for the fourth and the fifth and the sixth and then right after that back out to seattle we're in seattle for a week and then after seattle funny enough Back to filming in Texas. <laughs> and after Texas, then I get to go up, then it's up north to... You want to just put the calendar for everybody? It's, just, it's a lot. It's, it's, we're moving. We're moving. It's, you know, uh, idle hands, all that jazz. But uh, 
Well, well what I was going to say is like, you don't, we don't get a lot of chances to go when if someone has a special on a certain day, we don't get a chance to go. So Fox brothers has always had their burger special on Saturdays. Yeah. So this is the first time I got to try They do their own homemade tallow buns. Mm. And that, that, I like that buns. is a really good burger bun. As I'll say. Okay. Uh, then Josh Ennis of CAB certified Angus beef. Mm -hmm. He was there. I'm, I already forgot the term that we talked about before the show. Like, I'm holding it up. What is the... Roulette. roulette. Yeah, he made a roulette of bone marrow that he'd smashed into one of the patties. Mm. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, look up... Oh, yeah, what is it? What would that cost? I don't know, but like, yeah. uh, only $30 at, at, for the only, burger. Only yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, what oh, they don't man. tell you, it was 20000 of the $44,000. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so he made 60, like, basically 60-plus burgers with the... Damn. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, but yeah, so he was like, I can't you guys do it. got a hell of a I, deal. I can't do it in two patties. That's just too much. So he did it like in one patty. So you bit in and you got like this basically just bone marrow straight up. Uh, then let's see. Uh, like one burger had this amazing sauce that uh, it was the, they made a mayo with chili crisp and palm sugar and just all this. And then it had a, uh, a seaweed top, like, a piece of seaweed on the burger, awesome crunch. Uh, George Motes was there doing like his version, like a, a menuified version of the, his famous Oklahoma onion burger. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, then, oh God, there was, there's honestly just too many to like. There's, there's it, it didn't sound like there was, there were no water burgers, no, uh, no whoppers going on. Just some grade A, real quality I, yeah, burgers, I, I just, and I, Finch type style. Yeah, I, I just. I'm terrible at smashing burgers. It's just not a skill I have. What? I, I just don't do it at home often. Like I have, I have a 500 gallon offset. I don't, I don't use, I don't fair. use the the Blackstone to smash burgers often. Fair, fair. No, I'm, um, I do uh, this. What well, Virginia? We did a ton of burgers, and then uh, for Sunday here in Georgia, we did jerk um, smash burgers. Okay. Yeah. On with uh, cheddar cheese and pretzel buns and some other fun stuff, and I love a good smash burger, man. It, there's something to it. It just it just hits different. Well, uh, Billy said next year they're gonna go. Uh, they're gonna spread out and have like satellite events. And the idea is they want to raise two million dollars next year. Oh wow! But like I said, they're gonna have multiple satellite events in multiple cities. So. That's a lot of that's a lot of cities. That's a lot of events at the same time. Because if you think one did forty four right now, and, and it five, was the first event ever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. That's a. Uh, 200x 200x <laughs> um, the amount but it's that's doable that's doable all right heck yeah all right all right uh and also because we're not done with you yet how did the five course uh dinner go uh, awesome shout out to our friends ted and candy they were just like hey you want some help they showed up and helped me plate a bunch of dishes so Good old uh, ted. ted we got to get your ass in here sir um and that was awesome. It went really well. Uh, shout out to Butter and Cream for handling dessert. Like I, ju I just gave them some smoked pineapple, and they turned that into a smoked pineapple upside down cake. So can't can't uh, be mad. But every every element, every dish I did had an element of smoke somewhere in there. Can we talk about the other thing that has you smoking fruit, or no? No, not yet. Yeah, not, not yet. yet? Okay. Not yet. We'll, not yet. We'll put that. We'll, <laughs> we'll figure that out. Yeah, Don't like that. Okay, that's gonna be early June. So we're not far off. We're it's not, not far announced far yet. Or? No, it really isn't announced yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. um, that. no, that was awesome. So, like, it was really cool to just cook fun stuff, um, and kind of like a little barbecue adjacent instead of just straight like uh, barbecue platters. No, so. no, I can see that. I can see that. No, it was, that's that's wonderful to hear, man. I'm glad it sounded like it was an absolutely amazing event. The Giving Kitchen does so much, so I know they're very appreciative of that, those funds, and I'll, I'd love to toss my hat in the ring to be a part of trying to help hit that $2 million goal next year. Oh, I mean, really they're, they're, we're going to need a lot more people, so. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we, can do, uh, we can do some stuff. Yeah. I'll do, uh, I'll do a Highland Burger. Uh, yeah, it'll be really, really good. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post my submission sometime in the next couple of days, like, hey, guys, this is what I would do next year. Let's, let's, let's run it. Um, News updates. Uh, you, you got a lot. You got a lot more news than I do. Yeah, we got yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll go through it a, a little uh, fairly quick. For uh, topping it all off, two things with pops actually. 
I guess there's an FBI TV show that referenced Bloodsoul's barbecue on uh, in an episode <laughs> yesterday. Our uh, good old CBS. <laughs> yeah, that's that was really crazy to see. They were just her alibi. They used the restaurant as an alibi. Like we were at uh, Bloodsoul's barbecue and Compton getting getting their ribs, and they like questioned her about the ribs to make sure she was actually there. So, shout out to Pops for that. And he also received uh, or posted the first look of his new Eminem smoker uh, that's going into the Santa Monica location. It looks badass. It's got a uh, cut out of a 6'4 on the side of it, you know, his favorite ride. So way to go there. If you are trying. You can hear easy in the background. You can. <laughs> Every time you look into it. I wouldn't be surprised if they put something like cheeky in there. Yeah, I could see that happening. Um, bringing it back over to us here in Georgia. Uh, Justin and the cats over at uh, Fox also got the first Eminem in Georgia. So, like I said, these guys are on a roll. Yeah, get shout on out that. to Justin, Jonathan, and yeah. uh, and Craig. You guys get on that list while the, <laughs> the getting is still good. They're they're cranking out amazing work, and it's worth the wait. Um, following up that with uh, my man Hunter Grand, King of Swine, Whole Hogan, the People's Pitmaster, Mister Brian Furman is. Has added to his skews of uh, not only rubs, but is now selling his peach sauce, which if y'all haven't had it. It's one of the best barbecue sauces yeah, in all of barbecue. Hands down. Like, hands I mean, down. like, that, that, that's all you need to say. Like, yeah, it really is. And I'm glad to see it coming back because, geez, I, four or five years ago, he had a deal with Heinz, and that thing went so quick. I was able to snag me. I think I still have the, I saved the box with all the pit masters on there. I still have the box with that, but I, I'm not going to lie. I used the hell uh, of that the, sauce. The last time I went to his restaurant well, with the Kroger location, they didn't even have, they didn't have peach sauce. I know, so I'm so yeah. hurt. So, so get you some of that. It is worth it. Um, and you guys heard us talk about this next bit a little bit ago, that Goldie's actually performed the Biscuit Test. So how would you rate? You, you're more familiar with the Biscuit Test than I am. Uh, how would you rate how they did? I don't think I could have did, done it any better. Yeah. To be perfectly well, honest. Well, I mean, I'm, no, I'm talking about how that cooker looks. It looks great. Um, that design. Yeah. Amateur, m- medium, uh, like uh, semi-pro, pro pit master. Anybody can roll smoke on that thing. And that is a crazy even cook for single shelf, straight flow. Really, really cook. And out of 54, it only, it only toasted... Over toasted four, and you can biscuits. throw your, yeah, you can throw your pork up there. Yeah, you can throw your pork there. Toss a water pan in there, or if it's a hot, you know me, you know I love rolling smoke in the rain. Yeah, put your put your double splits right there to to dry out. That I was I was remarkably impressed. Yeah, by how that held. So if you haven't seen it, we'll link it in the show notes. I mean, I like I, and like and Johnny pointed it, like I mentioned it to him, and he pointed out it's like yeah, it's a smaller cooker, so you don't really have to worry about the corners. I I was just I was just honestly curious about how the corners are created. and even those looked really even and i looked at it i did corner and four dots out and i was like yeah all of these look right because sometimes on on corners you either get too hot or too cold right and you know that's where guys mess up and they're just like they're trying to do too much because they won't get the bark set there that they want no i was i was impressed with the results i have i've got nothing uh, to, to say on how they did that, except for maybe, you know, did you did you get the idea after listening to us? Did you did you hit record before or after the podcast went live? That's all we want to know, guys. Anyway, guys, you're killing it, crushing it, huge fan. Can't wait to come down and uh, see it for myself. Um, you know I love this next uh, lady, Miss Sylvie. Y'all, don't, don't let the smooth taste fool you and all that smile. Miss Sylvie is a beast <laughs> when it comes to rolling smoke. She, uh, Kicked butt at Jiggy with the Piggy, pulling in numerous first place, uh, topping it all off with first place ribs. Um, shout out to you, Miss Sylvie. Still crushing them from literally coast to coast, just <laughs> laying hands on them. Uh, this took place in North uh, Carolina. And talking about going coast to coast, have you ever heard of Eats? Got to say it like that because it's a lot. Con? I've heard of Eats, but not the con. Yeah, <laughs> I've heard of Eats, so I guess maybe they started their own con now. Right. And that is actually happening May 20th and 21st, the same weekend of Memphis in May. Um, 
there we've got some familiar names out there, and it's happening in Santa Monica. We've got uh, Moo's uh, Craft, so you know the whole crew is going to be out there. I wouldn't be shocked if we didn't if uh, um, Logan uh, from Zeph BBQ ends up out there as well. Tom, our old buddy Tom Calicchio, will be out there, uh, and many others. They've got, and it's a weird event. I feel like it's like a bunch of people just said, "Hey, we've got space, power, and bathrooms. Let's do something." Because they've got like people from like Ali Wong to Tom Calicchio to Moose. I'm like, this is a very hodgepodge. Yeah, it sounds. It's, a, it's just a food festival thing. Like, so they bring out everybody. It's like. Instead of just like a barbecue focused one, or even like the food and wine, it's it's more. Coll- uh, well, even the food and wine has gotten more eclectic, and and you'll see a lot of different cuisines and like barbecue, like especially barbecue events at food and wine. Yeah, yeah. So and uh, the you check out their site, and we'll have the link in the show notes. They've got Los Angeles queued up for us, at, like we said, May twentieth through the twenty first. But apparently, they're going to be dropping a few other spots. Chicago, they haven't announced dates yet, but Chicago, Chicago is supposed to be taking place in the midst of the summer, and the fall is going to round out with New York. So this is a uh, seems pretty cool. You can go ahead and get your tickets online. It seems to be like a Chase Sapphire type event. So if you have that card, perhaps you can get a deal. But you probably don't need it because uh, tickets are only thirty bucks. That's not bad at all. That is, you spend more on coffee in a week. So go go to this. Everything looks absolutely amazing. They're going to have a lot of uh, food vendors there. So I think it's worth it. If I if I wasn't already going to be somewhere else, I would I would go there. Uh, they're going to have flavors from afar. Giovanni's Tiramisu, Happy Ice, a lot of really cool cats seems to be a part of it. Like we mentioned, our great friends over are at Moose, Rowdy Rooster, Shake Shack, but, you know, you can get that any which way. Go check it out. Go see some of the great people, some of the musical talent. It's a, it's a fun time. I wish I could just go and, like, have a good laugh because uh, Ali Wong's freaking hilarious. And they're also going to have John. I don't know if you're familiar with John from Ghetto Gastro. Yeah, I... They're, they're going to be over there as oh, well. Nice. So it's, it's going to be a real chill, fun event. We'll have all the extra deets in the show notes. So you haven't watched Beef yet at all, have you? Yes. You have? Okay. I did. I did get to watch Beef. I downloaded it um, for my flight to and from uh, the East Coast the other day. Or okay. Northeast the other day. Okay. It's a funny show. It's, uh, <laughs> it is not, well, I take that back. It's not funny. It, it's, it's occasionally funny. It's occasionally funny, but it's a really, really sad show. Like a like a very sad show. It's not as funny as the trailer makes it out to be. Fair warning. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, so they announced the new, uh, the new barbecue people coming to Windy City Smokeout. I think you mentioned that Horn is going to be there. Yeah, Matt yeah, Horn. Yeah, Matt Horn but yep, yeah, yep. Three Little Pigs, Blues Hog, Horn Barbecue, Joe's Kansas City Barbecue, Laser Wolf. It's a great name. <laughs> uh, great that name. Sound, that sounds like a trivia team name. <laughs> There's actually a bar down in uh, either Miami or Fort Lauderdale called Laser Wolf. Okay. So well, could sick. it be the same? So no, no, no these, these guys are yeah. from Philadelphia. Oh. Uh, Lexington Betty's and then uh, Mama Fried and Panther City Barbecue are all the new people coming up to uh, Windy City Smokeout. So mm-hmm. ton, of, ton, of, ton of new people, ton of uh, old cats over there. Um. If you want to listen to a lot of country music and a lot of barbecue, go to Windy City Smokeout. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, well, I know uh, Joey was there last year. I don't know if he will be, like, participating in any capacity this year. But, uh, yeah, Windy City. And a few little other bits in that realm. Uh, not really in that realm, but bits of good news. Who doesn't like free? Right now, Master Bill is doing get a free rotisserie attachment if you buy 560 this isn't sponsored by them, but it's a barbecue podcast. It's a nice bit of news. Uh, the rotisserie unit's actually really cool. Use it a few times for uh, turkeys, chickens, racks of lamb. We have a whole video. You've done a porchetta it. yet? On I the have yet? done a porchetta. Okay. It is really good. Believe it or not, I make a lot of things, but that's his favorite thing. That the I'm porchetta? <laughs> it is very much worth having. You, you do know that nodding is not the greatest way to get on the show. Well, yeah, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, he's he, it's because he's not here, but it's it's one of my absolute favorite dishes, and I I I actually think the porchetta is what really launched me when I started doing it at like chateaus and wineries and vineyards. 
that was just always like the showstopper. Could, could you do a jerk porchetta? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I could. Um, I'd have to tweak the peppers and how I lay them in there just because of the, the, the heat and the longevity of it. Right. And, but yeah. I no, no. I wonder, I wonder if you could stuff it like with different things in a normal porchetta. Yeah. Yeah. I'd probably do a mafungo out of sweet plantain to add that sweetness in the middle. You know, maybe, maybe one day I'll get, I'll get to do one of these dinners with all the ideas I want to do. Um, see if someone's interested. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort it out. Um, but on that end, we've got two other little bits. 2023 Barbecue Hall of Fame nominees have been announced. And uh, one of I know, I know who I'm pulling for. I'm pulling for two real cool cats, just personal reasons. Uh, but we've got uh, Byron Chisholm, Steve Grady, David Klaus, Fast Eddie, uh, my brother, Mr. Roger Mooking, definitely believes it's time he gets his flowers for what he's done. Uh, Flora Payne, Malcolm Reed, um, Donnie Teal, Darren Worth, Dave Raymond. And those are the top 10. The final inductees should be announced on the 24th. So just after Memphis and May, should know who's going in there. I think it's pretty cool that Malcolm Reed is on the list. Um, I definitely think he's done a fair amount for the barbecue community as far as educational standpoint and getting people in, involved and in, excited about it. So well, well earned as well as Mr. Uh, Roger Mooking, who, you know, man fire food exposed and showcased so many talented people that I think they still would have been discovered, but it would have taken a while longer. Right. Than, yeah. Than it did. Is man fire food still going? <sighs> no. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 it's like the way everything's changed with TV and streaming yeah. over the past couple of years. It still airs. You can go and catch right. it. Like they do, they now push older episodes in like Food Network Canada or whatever right, right. over there. But I would love to see it come back. I think <clears throat> Netflix, um, <laughs> you guys should pick it up, you know, shift a few things, but but bring that back. Who knows? I've I've kicked a, a couple of shows. Well, it way. depends. It depends on if Food Network. Want, well, isn't Food Network under Discovery? So wouldn't they be Is on it? Max? Would they be on Max? Or I don't Max? know. They could they could be over there with Selena Gomez learning how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> and on to the next news. Um, I'm not able to get her on right now, but I'm doing my best to see if uh, I can give her a ring. Miss um, Delilah, one of the amazing contestants. From season two show formerly known as American Barbecue Showdown, that is just now Barbecue Showdown. Uh, Miss Delilah is one of the contestants on that show, and she's actually located here in Georgia. She'll be doing a watch party on the 26th when the show airs at her establishment. We will be posting the flyer and uh, have all that other additional information in the show notes. Trying my best. I told her if I was here in town, I would do my best to be there for the watch party, but I do not think I'll be able to make it. I don't think I'll be here. I think they got me shipping on the 25th. So still check it out. She's so sweet. I've had her food. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Oh, it's like it's like a hug from your grandma. It's so good. It's so thoughtful, but it's thoughtful and familiar comfort food. And uh, the establishment is run still in the family by her daughter and her son-in-law. Absolutely amazing people. Please, 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 if you're in, about, or around, because they're, they're actually located over beside Foxbirds at the works. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so it's worth checking out, guys. Um, get your orders in now, because I promise you, once people see the stuff that she makes and how well and talented she is, uh, the lines are going to be out the door. So... Are they actually in the works, or is it, are they the Chattahoochee Food Works? The, or, or they're, they're in the so they're in the the Food Works right beside that first food hall building beside Fox. Okay, okay, that's where they are. Yeah, like every time I go over there, I don't think I've actually been in the food hall part yet. It's worth it. Yeah. Go over, you'll see this amazing uh, older woman with a wonderful smile. Tell her she'd sent you. She'll give you a giant hug and scoop of mac and cheese and some delicious cornbread, and then charge you twenty percent more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you told her I sent you, probably. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, you've got a 
Yeah, the last bit of news. So yeah, right. you know, yeah, May twenty seventh is the day Barb's BQ is officially opening. So, Ooh. so they're, do, they're doing their it's a open, big month in May. They're doing their opening and then they're doing a brisket class the next day. <laughs> like I don't know <laughs> because they don't want sleep. Why would you want? Sleep? Why, why would you want sleep? It makes perfect sense. Like, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, shops open. By the way, we're just going to stay awake. Teach you guys how to make some briskets. Makes sense. So uh, shout out to them. Man. Well, what yeah. part of Texas are you going to be in? Believe it or not, I'm all over. Okay. So where are they? Where's the Where's the setup? Lockhart? How's that from Austin? Not far, like 45 minutes. If it, like that's 40, a lie because everything's an hour from everything in Texas. So I, it's at I, least an hour. I, no, like uh, Lock, Lockhart's within driving distance of Austin. I'll drive. Like even where, when we were in Corsair, it was still. It was like, hey, you are only like six miles away, but it was <laughs> like it would have. It was having this cut across water. I was like, well, we're not we're not doing that. So we're just going to take this hour drive to do six miles. All right. So let's see. I mean, well, six miles in Atlanta was going to take you what an hour fifteen? Yeah, <laughs> because time. I had to get a hotel because of shaking these fest for the showcases this past weekend. And I had to go seven miles, and it took forty five minutes. I was like, "Yeah, this is why." I, I drove. I drove to the the exact same uh, part of Avondale Estates yes, or on Monday and Tuesday. Yeah. I went at two p.m. on Monday. I went at around four p.m. on Tuesday. It was a That's thirty a mistake. That was a th- just a that, mistake. It was a thirty to forty five minute difference in drive times. Four p.m. It might as well be five thirty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, rush hour starts at about three thirty. Yeah, yeah, I remember like going the to college. The lunch rush ends, and it's just like, yeah, you've we're got just about going. fifteen minutes, and then rush hour starts. Yeah, I I legitimately remember in college leaving, and like, oh, it's four thirty, plenty of time. It's four for plenty of time. Like traffic didn't used to start until. And granted, I've been out of college for well over a decade, even far far longer. I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, but it was good at like five thirty is when traffic would hit. Like you could be out, you know, leave at four, fine. Not anymore. Not anymore. Traffic starts at three. <laughs> yeah, it. three o'clock. I, I, that's the one thing I do miss about pandemic times is how easy it was to get down it to. It was. Atlanta. You got you, you got your you got your little paper saying you're allowed to be out because you're in the food service world. You know, whatever, dropping off meals, just cruising. I felt like uh, Kramer <laughs> in uh, Seinfeld when they got rid of the. When they got rid of the the the, uh, the lines in the road and just widened the street, that's what it felt like. Like I'm just anywhere I want to be. No one's out here. Let's go. Uh, let's knock out a few questions, shall we? There's yeah, we haven't we haven't done questions. We haven't because we've been trying to catch people up on so many other cool things happening. But uh, let's go. This one is a question that I don't think I've ever been asked. Yeah. The first one. What's one style of cooking? you stray away from, but wish you were better at. This came from Mr. Cook Talk. You've gotten, you've gotten to see this question. So do you, do you have an answer off the top of your head? Why? Not all. I, 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 okay. It's been, it's been eating at me. I was like, do I stray away from any? Do you think I stray away from any? He's shaking his head. No, for the question. Sorry. No. um, (laughs) Yeah. I mean, to me, that question is more like, are there things you haven't tried that you wish you have? I if I have to put like a blanket statement, it would be baking. I'm I don't bake a lot, despite what you guys might have seen. That's you know I've got a couple of tricks left, but I'm not a huge baker. The biscuit test is <laughs> not from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the drop biscuits you made on the show also not really like traditional baking, right? I don't think that constitutes as, as yeah. big, but that to me is, you know, but I know how to do, I, I know like certain cakes and pies and like, you know, real good biscuits and certain other, I can do a good bun, uh, can't do whole bread, but you know, can always get down on some buns. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so I would say that, but as far as like cooking, cooking styles, no, I don't. I try not to avoid things. Like if I see it, I want to learn more. I get intrigued about it. I don't. I mean, I practice it as heavily as everything else. Just, to, just depending on like what the season of what we'll be doing calls for. That's really what I, I hone in on. I mean, one thing I would like to learn, and this like completely equipment based, because most like your standard kitchen, you can't get a high hot enough flame to do it. Okay. Uh, like the guys who do the crazy wok cooking. Oh yeah. 
like like the, that jet engine f- like flame, <laughs> like, like, and then just the speed and like you watch a guy like you're like, how is he not spilling any food? Yeah, like that's the most amazing thing. Yeah, that yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, that that should be constituted as live fire cooking in my opinion. I would count that. I would yeah. count that as live fire cooking. Yeah, a hundred percent count that as live fire cooking because that thing sits for three seconds. You got to toss Dark, all of it. Dark, yeah. Dark. yeah, all of it. Like it's con- and I saw. It's funny you mention that. There's this TikTok video of this kid doing walk tricks. I don't know if you've seen it, but he's he's making a dish. He's flipping it, doing just like what you'd normally see. Then out of nowhere, the spoon comes in, and he like hooks the walk in some weird way with the spoon, and he's spinning the walk with the spoon. I'm like, how? It almost looks like it's levered him. Like this is, mind you, this kid's maybe ten years old. I was like, yeah, that's Michelin star. Very, very soon. <laughs> very, very soon. Um, so, yeah, I could, I could see that. I would I would actually like to do, get better at and practice more like hibachi style cooking. Like I'm just the surface base of it because those, I don't think people realize how hot those tables really, really are and how much skill and timing and prep goes into everything you're about you're to see. Sitting there. like three feet away and you can feel the heat coming off the entire dinner. Yeah, and imagine being right there in front of it. Oh, I mean, like, no I, gloves, yeah. no protection, no nothing. I, I didn't realize how hot one of those black, st- how much heat those black stones put off until this past Sunday. Oh, yeah, man. They crank it. That propane and propane accessories, it pushes. Yeah, like, and it like, pushes. it feels like all the heat is radiating off that thing directly in your face. I was, I was using, uh, uh, griddles all weekend, flat tops all weekend. And that coupled with, you know, the if spring finally deciding to show up and my leather apron, I was downing bottles and bottles of water trying to stay hydrated because that thing holds. It, it, it goes, it goes. But uh, Mr. Co- Mr. Cook Talk, yeah, hope that answers, man. Um, what kind of beer would you recommend for using for a beer can chicken? That's uh, comes from a long time ago. Tropicalia. <laughs> uh, you're gonna use something that that expensive? <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's it's it's, but because I know you're gonna get the flavor, so I mean, you got to do something, you know. Yeah. It works. It works well. Maybe because I haven't had to like buy a pack in a while, but it hits really, really well. Like especially when you're doing something with a little bit more acidity, like a nice mojo roast. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I could. I could. Yeah. Something with a little more. Uh, yeah. What are you, what are you picking if you got to pick? I mean, I'm simple. Just give me like a high life. <laughs> <laughs> Does a Modelo come in cans? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah do a Modelo. Do a like, Modelo. Yeah. Like a guys. And you hear that? Cans. Don't do a bottle. Don't do a bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please. <laughs> don't, please. Don't do I feel a like we have to, and it's in the name beer can, but just like uh, you know, you, you probably can't start an oil fire in one of the the new M and M's. A grease fire, someone will. Do you, just, do, you do your tall boy? <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. I'm not wasting out on tall boy because you got to really get it up there in that bird. Uh, <laughs> if you do the tall boy, if you're doing a turkey, I've I've seen people do bear can turkeys. Okay, well, I can't. Yeah, this, I did not know that. I did not know that was a thing. It it, it, it is a thing. They right. make bear can turkey holsters, and if you're gonna do it, just go to Walmart, get the can holsters. They're like. Two for five bucks. Yeah. It's fine. It'll stop your bird from tipping over. It makes a lot less of a mess. Like, Just go that route. Just go that route. And, yes, you do. It is best if you sip or pour a little beer out first so there's some room for everything to do us. Oh, and, and throw some uh, throw some of your seasoning in the beer if you can. Yeah. Th- or uh, I personally, uh, and I'm so sad, guys. I, I've been trying to resuscitate my, my rosemaries and my herbs. It's uh it's not working. It's not going. I mean, the weather has not helped. The well, this was from the cold snap a couple months ago. Yeah, but but I'm holding. saying like yeah, it yeah, really hasn't like, been better. We've had it's May and April, and we've had days that have gotten down into what the fifties, the fifties. Oh, yeah, 40s. I took the dog out the other morning. It was like fifty two degrees. Yeah. I'm so like, what is happening right now? So I lost the herbs, but I will be doing a special live cook using what's left of them. Uh, I'm going to do like a light subtle smoke because I, I still have some olive wood from season one of American Barbecue that I've just been holding and piecing off, piecing off. So I'm going to do like a nice subtle olive wood, and basil and rosemary smoke and probably some some uh, some some white fish and some uh, do a chicken. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say like, so yeah, throw some fresh herbs in there. 
if you're going to use some like dri- like whole dry spices, toast them first to yes. get it, wake up the oils, like peppercorns and and cumin seeds and stuff. But you could totally throw up. Yeah. Pro tip: making pastrami brines, toast that shit. Toast those seasonings. It, it makes the world of difference. I'll tell you guys right now, on my bark for my briskets, I toast my peppercorns whole before I hit it before it uh it gets broken up in my little six dollar coffee grinder. Makes a difference. I promise you. Too Just much that. time. <laughs> Uh, hey, but I mean, yeah, for, I don't, yeah, I don't do it. I'm not, I'm not doing pop ups enough like I used to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I but still, but I was w- still w- one of would those. Would you do steps. that for a pop up if you were doing like ten briskets? Yeah, that's insane. If you saw what I do for the prep on pop ups, like I should, my time would be cut in half if I stopped half of the prep stuff that I do. Yeah, but it's because I do those things that I think that my stuff stands out a bit. Yeah, and that, and I guess now even with the schedule, like people are coming to the events that we did this past week, and like, when's the next full pop up? Like, I don't know, I'm booked in the next year, but I'm gonna try to figure something yeah. out. Like I said, me and me and Howard, uh, we're we're trying to, you know, I may try to do a restaurant takeover for a night or two. In the well, the th- there's the way where you can do the five course, the multi course thing. Yeah, they yeah. would be down for it. That yeah, I get to show out. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably even fly in some chef buddies, make it a make it a whole thing. It'd be nice. Uh, oh, <laughs> I did answer this, I think, for Bex, but it's uh, Bex Family Barbecue. Just got a new 500 beef tallow for seasoning. Absolutely. Always. Like, uh, Always. You, you beef tallow, the highest, like, grapeseed oil. Mm-hmm. Uh, grapeseed or avocado. I mean, like, you can get by with canola or or. Vin- or or uh, vegetable. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't use olive. <laughs> Please don't. Please don't. Because I've had people who's like, it's smoking. I was like, yeah, it's not. That's not. Yeah. It's not high time. Don't use don't use olive oil. No. Um, I mean, if you really want to go hardcore, you could do the linseed oil. You could. But I save linseed for my boards. Yeah. And linseed and mineral oil I save for my boards. But I love seasoning a new rig. Like, if I had the space, I would just buy new rigs each week just to go through because it's such a therapeutic process. Yeah. And doing it right, uh, it just sets you up. It sets your cooks up. It, it really does. It really does. Um, and let's let's do, what do we got here? Well, we'll skip the flavor one. What's, what's your go-to season for burger patties? My, my American Prime Rub, legitimately. I, I, I use Goldie's, actually. The Goldie's all-purpose rub for this the weekend. The AP is good. Yeah, the yeah, AP yeah. is good. Both are available online at two different locations. Hit up Goldie's and hit up Phil's Barbecue Co. And you can get them and try them. And, and, and do, the, do the, talk tic, uh, the TikTok uh, barbecue thing and combine them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just all one hodgepodge, go to town. Put a little Cosmos on us. Uh, ooh, what is the best method to smoke wild hog and venison? Uh, this is something that I haven't done, so I'm going I'm to leave it to you on this one. Uh Low and slow and add fats. Um, they're lean. Wild hog is also a different flavor profile than you would think because they're just eating whatever's out there, different nuts, all this. They're lean, not as fatty as you would really, really think. So be mindful of it, but based often, if, depending on what you're going to do with the venison too, wouldn't hurt to put some back. Strap some back fat in there if you're grinding it down for sausage. Shout out to Boss. Uh, he went hunting, and I think he ground it up, his, his, uh, his venison meat, and made sausages out of it. Um, I, If you're trying to get really, really fancy and want to shift things a little with hog, I cut the fat or I cut the oil with um, port wine, and, and that's just part of the prepping meat process. Just letting it sit for a little bit, and you'll just see it literally separate and skim off, rinse, and then you can start to dress it and remove and uh, prepare it how you want. It'd be great in stews. One thing I've seen people, or I, like one friend did that was really good, Yeah, rotisserie the, the uh, boar leg. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That'd but, be good. Yeah, rotisserie over slow smoke is a good way to like keep keep the protein moving. Mm-hmm. And then that way, when the fat drips and hits the coals and yeah, it's back up, yeah. and hit with a uh, with a uh, 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 herb brush of lemongrass, uh, fresh oregano, get you uh, um, some lemon zest and whatever you're dipping in there, and just just really get in there. Mi- micro scoring as well will really help. So a lot of different things. If you want to do a salt cure overnight, but once again, be mindful of, of how much moisture you're pulling out. 
should be good to go. And we'll wrap it up with, are there any meats you don't brine? And that is from Bruised Brews. Uh, I mean, like, I mean, to do a dry brine, you're going to have to let it sit overnight. I know you season your briskets and let them sit overnight. Yeah. I'm, I season like an hour before. So I don't dry brine briskets, pork butts, ribs, uh, basically anything that I, beef ribs, turkeys, anything I'm cooking for that, that like on a pop up, I'm not brining wet or dry. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, just don't really have the time and space, really. I understand. Yeah. If you did, would you? Uh, brining turkeys, I would. I don't like pork. I don't think it adds that much. Yeah, I don't do pork. Uh, I don't really do anything. Because, like, I, you're, you're, you're messing with, like, as soon as you start dry brining, pork is really, it will uh, absorb a lot of flavors, and you, you'll you miss out on the, the porkiness. Yeah. Yeah. And you want, you want the meat to taste like meat. I, yeah. I get that. But, uh, yeah, wet brines, you know, for jerk chickens, turkeys during the holidays, briskets if I'm doing pastrami's. Aside from that, I'm not doing anything with ribs and stuff like that. Would, um, you, would you consider salting a steak and letting it sit? overnight dry browning or just would you consider it more just trying to develop the like dry out the the no. crust and create a pellicle I'll so con- you can I'll get a better consider it a dry brine you would consider because okay. it's overnight like if you're right. doing a 24 if you're just saying i put some salt it's tucked in for an hour no okay so yeah like maybe you don't have to salt the brisket or the steak when you let it sit overnight and mm-hmm. you could just salt it like an hour before yeah you can just let it sit uncovered in the fridge just for that extra moisture but i i purposely like to salt Put on a rack, tray underneath, let all that moisture fall out so it's not sitting in it. So both sides are going. If you really, 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 really want to get fancy and you've got an extra mini fridge, go get you a $4 um, USB fan, plug it in there, set it um, beside your steak on low and let it just let that air push and hit it as it's salting so that extra really dries out. So I guess we need to link the... uh the DIY uh, 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 <laughs> aging bot. Yeah. yeah, I think it was the the meat hook guys did that video. Maybe I think so. Yeah. Okay, we'll find it. We'll find it. But that's all we've got. That's not bad. No, that wasn't bad. We will get to part two of the the pop up at, yeah. so, at some point. We will. We, we've just had so much going on. It's the it's barbecue month. What do you expect? Oh yeah, it is barbecue. It's month. barbecue month. It's it's a lot. We're trying to we're trying to satisfy your appetite with this amazing barbecue news and. Uh, this has been another amazing episode of This Week in Barbecue. I'm your host. Still, not much has changed in the last hour. Rashid Phillips. And joining me, still, Mr. Brian Hull. Not much of a... You're not, you're not an American mess up. It happens. No, no, no. I was an American dumbass for a good, uh, you know, hour. But it's, it's fine now. There, there have been worse. There have been worse crimes. <laughs> Trust me. Remember, you know, Crocs are still a thing. Someone made Ugg boots and they're still like wild cakes. Worse crimes. Worse crimes. And, uh... Still, the voice you hear and face you do not see, Mr. Lee Garman. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, tell a friend to tell two friends, and as always, be good to one another. Cheers.